Hello, Steve here. Hey, special treat. Uh, I'm going camping with Perry Peacock and we're gonna do a little fishing. We've got this canoe here behind us and uh, we're gonna see if we can catch us some dinner. There he is. <laughs> it's fishing time. Heck yeah. Nothing better than fishing. Yeah. Well, and eating the fish is better probably. Yeah, <laughs> cooking it and eating it. Absolutely. This should be good times. I really appreciate you bringing me up here, Perry. Hey, no problem. I love well, coming and it's good to have an excuse to come. Heck yeah. Let's get out there and see what we can catch. There we go. I don't even have Perry's got one already. We just got here. I haven't even gotten my... Whoa. So hopefully I get it in the boat without losing them. Oh, that's pan size for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a dinner. Well, on this lake, a lot of them are going to be small. Yeah. So that's actually a decent size for here. Here we go. Steve's got him one. Let's see if I can get it in here. With that there we go. Thing. There we go. Oh. Happy times, man. There's dinner. There Rainbow. we go. We're Rainbow. not going to be hungry tonight, right? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> All right. Rainbows and sunsets at the same there time. There you go. Perfect. Well, Perry just caught another one. That's three to one. I'm getting skunked. Oh, that's a pretty nice one. Oh, yeah. That's the yeah. best one. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, see, he got the hook all the way in. Uh-oh. It's going to be a bugger to get that thing out of there. Here, I have a pair of pliers right here. Let's see if I can I knock him on the head a little bit. Yeah, we'll edit that out. <laughs> edit that out for the kids. Yeah. This is a family show, Perry. Do you want this? Do you want these pliers? How big he is. Here's another one. Perry's slaying them. Is that keepable? Sure is a nice night. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Pulling pretty hard there. You know, I have some other videos where I don't catch very many fish. Ooh, that's a nice one. Look at that. You got a whole pile of fish. You're going to be eating fish for a week. More than that. You don't know how much we like fish. <laughs> I'm afraid it's it's actually focusing on my reel rather yeah. than on the it's water. Like but it might... Uh, might be kind of a cool shot, actually. Come on, baby, come on. Oh, it's okay, I got it now. Oh, it's just a little guy. I get it in, I've got such a long leader here. Well, here's the closing scene for our fishing this evening. It's, it's dusk and it's time to go into camp. We both got tangles on our lines, so we decided this is the time to to call it. This is kind of a tip. I don't know how many other people do this. Probably lots of people. But these are dehydrated potatoes. And I just go buy the cheapest au gratin potatoes. I think these were Hungry Jack or Hungry... I don't remember. Anyway, I think they're only a dollar or a dollar fifty. And, uh, you know, this is just two boxes of them. So just rehydrate these, brown them up, and they're delicious. Get out old reliable here. You know, I've had a lot of different fireboxes over the last couple of years. Sometimes I'll use, use one for a little while and then give it away or something. But I know that this is the one that I did my original testing in because when I was doing that sawdust test where I filled it with sawdust mixed with wood pellets and uh -huh. then I had the toilet paper roll in the middle. Right. I was tamping that sawdust down and I was tamping it so hard that I actually bent the fire grate so I can tell this is that one because <laughs> I just bent it back but it's... I still have my... I don't know if my original is with me today or not. <clears throat> it was back before all the grates and everything went on it. Oh yeah, before we had any of the didn't attachments. didn't have any of the little notches for those. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna preload this baby up, packed full, so that we'll have good hot coals for when we're just finishing off the fish. But because I'm gonna have to rehydrate those potatoes, I want it to go ahead and just be nice and hot right in the beginning. Yeah, I'm not gonna fill this up too full, or I won't have enough room to. Remember the video I did in the winter where I cooked the uh, I cooked the trout on that, scraped the snow off that log, put yeah. the firebox on the log and cooked the trout. Yeah, I do remember that. <clears throat> I filled the stove like, I don't know, it's probably four inches 
higher than the top of it. Oh yeah. And I lit it and let that all burn down until I had like just hot coals. I think I was like oh, two and a half inches thick of just red hot coals. Oh yeah. And man, I I cooked uh, I cooked a whole trout, heated up a bunch of uh, water and everything for hot drink and all that sort of stuff. Nice. I, I did it all on just one charge of the stove. Oh, that's awesome. But that was all maple, kind of like this, maple sticks. Yeah, that's kind of the challenge when I'm just doing, you know, my videos out on our property with the sagebrush and trying to grill or something. The sagebrush just does not produce good hot coals. I mean, they're good, they just don't last long. Yeah, quick burning. Quick burning. So let's see if I can get this going with just these sticks. A little bit of a breeze. Come on, baby. Looks like it wants to. It wants to. There's not quite enough heat. All I have is there one, goes. There goes. one stick going oh. so far. <laughs> Like it's catching, it's catching. There, now it's building a little heat. You know, I'll have to baby it for just a second longer and then we'll be good. Beautiful fire. It Wonderful is, thing. It is always beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's the nice thing about selling stoves mm -hmm. is you get to take advantage of everybody's love for fire, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's a good thing. Everybody loves a fire. Yeah, Ben and I used that the nano stove when we, we made kind of a lean-to shelter in the winter. We pulled the stove back underneath the lean-to. Oh yeah. Because it was kind of snowing and a little bit of rain, but mostly snow. Kind of a light wet snow. Uh-huh. So we just pulled it back under the lean-to just enough. And once we got the stove going, it didn't smoke much, you know. Uh huh. So we just pulled it back in there, and we just sat down, cooked up a bunch of hot chocolate, and cooked up some, I can't remember, noodles or rice or something we made. There's something nice about being cozy when you're yeah. cooking. Because <laughs> you can move, with a stove like this, you can move the fire to where your shelter is, you know. Yeah. Like usually we would start it out in the open. So you can get your big flame up done. Yeah. And then once it's stabilized, bring it back inside your shelter. And now everything's cool, you know. You've got a nice little fire to do your cooking on. You just sit back and relax. This pan set here, Perry, is kind of a prototype of something I'd like to be able to produce. Uh -huh. So what I want to have is... you. People have seen me use these square pans yeah. to get all this stuff out of here. But I want to have a two pan set, this square size, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this on, and then, and then this larger size, and then have them either be able to nest like this okay. to be able to have yeah. a kit, or so have them have kind of an oven, or yeah, something or sort of. have them be able to nest like this, uh -huh. but have the one pan shouldered. So that they they nest perfectly this way, uh -huh. and as a kit, so you could actually fill them with, you know, your kit items, right. you know, this way. Mm -hmm. And then you can use one. At, so I'll show you how it works so well because I just love cooking this particular meal, actually. Well, and it's obvious I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, so do I, especially when... I've actually it's... lost some weight, but I still like to eat. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. That's what makes it hard to <laughs> to keep that girlish figure. It's Cause... hard because when you go out camping, you know, you're out in the woods, it's like, well, of course you want to eat. <laughs> the food tastes I mean, so good. I did that trick where I went three days without eating. The thing I missed the most is... I miss the food, but mostly I just miss being able to cook. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, there's something about having, a, you know, a stove and cooking some things and that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah, it is it's, fun. It's something that makes camping kind of interesting. So that was something I, psychologically, I missed that more than the actual food in my stomach. We probably don't need as many potatoes for morning because we have eggs and bacon. So 
I think that's probably, you think that's too much? Those are gonna that's swell good. up quite a bit. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, so now that the potatoes are in there and I've got a pretty good layer of water, I'm gonna go ahead and just cover those up. See, and this doesn't fit perfect because this is just my rig, but that'll hold the steam in there. And then I have a pot grabber to be able to, you know, hold Oh, it. I love those things. Those are nice, aren't they? Handy little pot grabber, dude. So, and that little wood is, this is actually working. This maple doesn't burn, doesn't flare up as much. <laughs> no. So this is actually going to give us a nice cooking temperature right from the beginning instead of, yeah, you know, with pine, it really flares up yeah. and you get a really hot, and this then will it be burns a nice, down. This will be a nice steady heat. Yeah, this is going to be a really nice steady temperature. Which is cool having twigs, because you know normally most woods that you're burning twigs they go really quick. Yeah. Well, this stuff is you know it's lasts burns a little, a little bit. slower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'll shut this down and bring you guys back in when we're a little closer. Okay, so we decided to flip this over because we're going to need the space of the bigger pan. So I'm just going to flip that. I lost a little bit of water, but not too much. You could be in the circus, man. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty graceful, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then once these are fork tender, then I just go ahead and put the fish in. Did we get the fish still up? Okay, I'll grab them. And then there's still some water on the bottom of the pan, and so that'll help the fish kind of steam for a second. Yeah, go ahead and just put them in there. And we'll let them, uh, we're going to do two or three. Could we have another Think we can eat three? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can, too. Well, we ended up catching eight fish. So, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. That's, that's just, that's just right. So, the pan good. That's good stuff there. So now we'll let that steam for a second, which will help us peel the bone out of the meat and peel the skin off of the fish. And, and then we'll put some butter in there and brown it all up. Okay, so now that most of the moisture has, has uh, cooked out of this food, the fire is actually reduced in temperature as well. So it's really perfect timing. Because um, now we don't want it to be nearly as hot because there's just not nearly as much moisture to absorb that, to absorb that heat. So, so now there's still quite a bit of water in here. Well, I think I better start getting some butter in here or we're gonna have, we're gonna start burning our spuds. Oh no, we're good. Here we go. Oh yeah, look at that. Coming right apart. Beautiful. Yeah, Ooh, look at that. That's what we were waiting for. We're, talk, we're talking automatic fillet here. And then I'll just turn that over and try to get the other side to do the same. Now if you cook this too long, then the bones start falling apart too. And yeah, then, and then you got the bones in there. Yeah. Now that's the way my wife likes to do it. Yep. Pull it off of one side and off the other and you're practically bone free. Practically. With... There's just some in the very front where you cut the head off. But I think this is ready to go. Well, I'm drooling, so we're going to have a puddle on the ground here if we don't eat soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to brown this up a little more, or should we go ahead and eat? I, I'm good however you want to do it. It looks like it's starting to brown, but if you want a little more, I mean, we got some good heat under there to do that with. Yeah, the problem is, is this pan is sticking just a little bit, so yeah. everything I brown sticking to the stays, <laughs> stays on the pan. Look at all that beautiful brownness yeah. down there that's just stuck. Yeah, too bad so. that bigger pan wasn't the non-stick one. Yeah, I know. Okay, so we have dinner finished up here. This is our fish and uh, fish and potatoes. And I've kind of stirred it so much it's all broken up, but there's big chunks of fish. You can see that's a big chunk of fish. So this is some nice trout there's another, another big chunk there so and we're putting it into tortillas make it easy to eat that's what you call edible dinnerware <laughs> oh let's see i'm not 
no, following, no not di- following the action here with my other hand. No dishwashing involved. There, give that a try. You want a little more? I have a, that's, I have, well, that's good for that. I have enough tortillas for two each. So. Yeah, that, that fills that shell really nice. We'll take a bite of that, Perry, and see what you think. Mm. Does it need more seasoning, salt and pepper? No. <laughs> Pretty good. Primo, very good. Awesome. That is nice. Awesome. So mm. we'll eat this up. Okay, we're going to heat up some water for some hot chocolate. Oh, yeah, there we go. Got a got a water bottle inside the uh, cup holder there. Got some nice flames going. That that thing will be boiling in no time. Yeah. I love that I'm thing. ready for some hot chocolate. And look, we got a pretty good breeze, and yet look how much that's, that heat and everything is still being retained in there. Yeah, I think this is going well enough. I might be able to. Yeah, now I can close it, and it's not smoking. So Look at that. Here that whole go. The whole inside is nothing but glowing coals and flames and uh even with a fairly good wind out here yeah that should heat up pretty fast oh that's nice well that's gonna be good i'm i'm ready for some hot chocolate too i can hear a little stirring in there already yep the good old stainless steel makes <laughs> makes a it lot creaks. of noise okay our water's a boiling have you tried these pot holders with these i haven't tried them with the with the uh, with those things, huh? Yeah, they work really well. I've I've really liked the. Uh, I've used my pot holder for all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're they're really they're a lot more handy than you think. Well, we should taste this and see if it is right. rich enough. I'll that just put that trick. back in and let it stay hot. That's what I like about using that like that. Is that, you know, you can have some water in there. You can let it die down a little. Just keep a little coals in there. Yeah, it'll keep it'll it hot. hot if, you know, if you need to top off your drink a little with some hot. It'll certainly be hot to, enough. You're yeah. not having to heat up a whole other thing. It's just sitting there ready for you. Staying ready. I hope that's I hope that's enough hot chocolate in there. We'll make it work. I always underestimate how much you need. Because I had a whole bunch of it when I was loading it up. Looks like... Uh, is that a caddis fly right there? It looks, it looks like, like a caddis. I don't have my glasses on, but I have some of those. What I can tell, it kind of looks like. It. I have some of those in my fly. Well, the fish must like them. Yeah, They're maybe we'll have to try them tomorrow. <laughs> mm, bon appetit, little hot chocolate. It's just about right. Oh yeah, it's just a little bit weak, huh? Yeah, it's not but bad. Not, not bad. Okay, so it's morning, and uh, we're setting up. We're going to do some cooking this morning, and uh, I brought up the prototype of the leather case for the Nano. I think it turned out so really this nice. Is a carbon felt I've used quite a bit, and this is also my prototype for the next generation or the second generation of Nano. So this Nano actually has the holes here, and there's holes on all four sides and this is the one I just drilled by hand and uh, and made the prototype out of you know an existing nano uh, but let me show you what that does you can see the pins here how they're actually nested in to the folded nano so the way that works is there's a little tab here that holds the fire grate and that actually prevents these from being able to fall out so even if you work at it and try to get these out, you know, that there's just not room for them to come out until you actually open up the Nano and then you can just, you know, and then, and then you just lift them out. So and there you have your pins. So let me show you what that does. I'm just doing all this holding this in the air. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit more challenging, but I think I'll be able to show you pretty well. Um, but these pins, the special shape not only allows it to nest, but it also makes it so these pins won't just fall right out of their position once you get them uh, into their position. So these holes aren't perfect. Like I said, I just hand drilled, you know, this prototype. Um, but you go ahead and this one actually will only go from the other direction because my holes aren't 
because my holes aren't perfect. This goes from this direction. But you can see the shape of that pin, the gravity pulls that bent piece down and then that makes it so they don't just fall out. So you pick up your stove or move your stove, they don't just fall out onto the ground. And in this case, we've got a bunch of leaves and stuff. You could, you know, you could lose something in here pretty easily. So that's nice to keep those from falling out. And let me show you the, the position that creates for the trangia. Let me just pick up the trangia here. So that creates a higher position for the trangia. Let me just take the lid off of this so I can show you a little better. So that sits up nice and high in the trangia and uh, so that'll give you a really efficient blue flame um, which depending upon what you're doing it, it also gives you a little bit of a lower temperature um, so this offers the third position for the trangia in the nano you have all the way on the floor then you can rest it on the lid which some people are concerned about the heat but it doesn't really get very hot at all it's really not a concern about you know damaging your o-ring or anything it's just not it's not at all hot under the trangia so the next position is sitting on the cap and then the third highest position is this position and this position actually allows full range use of your simmer ring so this simmer ring can be in any position and it overlaps the sides of the nano so uh, there's no obstruction for being able to use that simmering any way you like. Now there's one more thing that these pins uh, give us and that is the, abil the ability to use the Trangia gas burner attachment. And I'm actually going to use this this morning but I'll show you how this works. So you've got this uh, stainless steel braided hose and then you've got the valve on the end. So you run this valve end in and you put it through, you put it, let me see if I'm, if I'm in frame here. So you put this through the hole, kind of give it a little rotation as it goes through and that allows it to, I'm trying to do this with one hand and it's kind of challenging but you get this, there it goes. So that goes, I probably totally went out of frame. But anyway, so you run the valve through and then you bring the attachment down and then it actually snaps right into position and then it's held into position very securely. So it won't come out of there unless you flex these edges and then you can take it out. So it spring snaps into position, which is nice. And then you just hook that up to your gas and you're cooking on gas. You're going to live the life out here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started and get some, uh, get some potatoes cooking. I'm using a bigger pan, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up the stance of the nano a little bit. So it really puts out a lot of heat. So if you want to, you can really crank this up and get water boiling really fast. But I'm gonna, uh, yeah, it's still going. So I'm gonna turn the temperature down a little bit. One really nice thing about this Trangia gas attachment is it has a wide range of temperatures. You can really throttle it down for a really low temperature or like I showed you before, it has a really high temperature. So I'm going to set the firebox up. Uh, we had it set up with the with the cup uh, with the boil plate in it last night, and um, so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just empty this out. It's got ashes in it and whatnot. So I'll get it all cleared out and loaded up, and we'll cook some uh, bacon over here on this. little bit of <clears throat> fertilizer for the forest you know people are worried about their ashes 
but it's uh, you know people put ashes on their garden because it's really good fertilizer so I don't know why they're terribly concerned about it I mean I agree you don't want to leave a big black bunch of coals and and whatever else but sprinkling some ashes certainly isn't doing the forest any harm okay so I'm actually gonna preload this up and I'm gonna put these bigger sticks down at the bottom to give us some really nice hot coals has his camera set up as well so you'll be able to watch this on his channel and on my channel and we'll have a little bit of a different take on each I think absolutely <clears throat> but what I what I'm gonna do this morning is uh, decide to make some cornbread and we're gonna do it oven style so what I've got is the nano stove down here and inside the nano stove which fits in there really nicely is the the Trangia alcohol burner and uh, and what we're going to do is use that as our heat source. I could also use, of course, wood, as you've seen before, where I fuel it with wood and that sort of thing. But to do this, this is kind of a slick way. We actually did this at a show about a year ago, and we were, we were making, actually, yeast muffins with the same idea. We had fresh muffins coming out about every 15 minutes, and it worked really well. So we used the stove here as our heat source. And it works really nicely and with uh, these legs on the stove turn out for a wider pot. And this is a three quart stainless steel pot. And uh, what I do with that is inside the pot I have three, three stones. You can see the size of them. And uh, what they act, uh, they act like a thermal sink. So the, uh, they capture the heat that we put off initially from this stove underneath there and then we'll put our cornbread mix inside this stainless steel cup that'll sit on top of those rocks and then when we put the lid on what we've done is we turned this three quart pot into literally an oven and we start the fire right on the top and let it burn down and that that gives us some really nice hot coals but then the the, the heat is very usable through the whole cycle so I'll put the pan as soon as this gets going a little more than that I'll put the pan on it and go ahead and start utilizing that heat. Okay, I've got my bacon all laid out on my pan. I've, I've, from what I understand, you're supposed to put bacon on a cold pan, so there we go. We'll get the bacon cooking here. This, this is about, I can't, I can't leave my hand on here without burning it, so we're pretty, we're pretty, warm, pretty hot in here. So I'm going to pull the lid off. And grab this stainless steel cup out of here. Put the lid back on. I just I like to preheat that. Hopefully you can see it there. I just got this porcelain bowl that I we're making do with what we have here. <laughs> I just happen to have this cornbread mix in there, so I think I'm gonna pour it. I don't know how much. Probably a third full. And then we'll cook that. Since I haven't done this before, I'm not sure. I don't want to get it. I'm afraid if I get it, if I pour it too deep, maybe it won't cook in the middle. So I'm hoping that that right there will be about right. So we'll go ahead and put that in here. Put our lid back on. So I have not added any fuel to this. This is that same load of fuel. It's that preload, and it's given me just a really nice cooking temperature. And as the moisture goes out of the food, the temperature goes down on the fire, and everything works in perfect time. And uh, oh, it's starting to it's rise. It's cooking. Yeah, it's looking good. See, he's got the big rocks down there, and for for a little thermal mass, and that's going to be delicious. I'm excited to try that. Okay, so my bacon is pretty well done and my fire is down to hot coals so now it's just I mean there's just a couple of pieces I don't know I might be out of frame here there's a couple of pieces here that are uh, that are just need to be crisped up a little bit and so that little bit of hot coals is just the perfect temperature to do that for me 
Now I've got my gas turned on over here. And I've got a little bit of the bacon grease in here and I'm going to just brown those spuds up a little bit. And uh, I've got that kind of set at a fairly low temperature because I just want those to brown up nicely. You can see this, this bacon really turned out nice and so we're going to put all these ingredients together and have ourselves a really nice breakfast. I was hoping we don't have to pry it out of here. Oh, there, there it, it comes. That doesn't look well, burned at all. It's not burned. I get stuck a little bit in the bottom. It's probably too deep of a cup and straight sides. So it's probably... But it's not burnt on the bottom at it, all. It is fully cooked. And it is cooked all the way through. So we'll uh, slice this off a little something. I mean cornbread, you should just tear it. But, you know. There you go, Steve. Mm, thank you. And this is a sweet cornbread. Mm, I really love it's it. It's hot. It's like eating cake. Mmm. <laughs> but yeah, that is delicious. There you go. So You'd I mean, have to call see. that a success. Hey, I have some butter over here. <clears throat> oh, that'd be good. Yeah, he's got some sweet butter. But so, see, you can turn your firebox stove, your nano stove, or anything into an oven just by using a large pot like this. I mean, it's a, it's a great, it's a great additional way to, uh, to use your stove. It's a great additional way to use your stove is to turn it into an oven. And uh, it does take a little bit of playing around with it to kind of get it dialed in just right, but. A little bit of practice. But anyway, bon appetit, I'm telling you what, this is awesome. Yeah, thanks, Perry. <laughs> One thing I, in the South, I learned to love cornbread. Oh, it's good stuff. And here again, you had places that some made sweet cornbread, some was very bread like you know I mean not sweet at all uh-huh some of it was really soft like cake some was hard like a brick practically uh-huh <laughs> anyway so the stones they give us some some elevation and they give us a thermal mass so we have some retained heat in there and so that kind of helps us and once you get started with this you can do a series of th these things over and over and it's very easy to, to do and to take care of. Because your rocks are already your hot. Your rocks are already hot, your pot's already hot, your oven, you're ready to rock and roll. I don't worry about it. Right, because the flame's going to be the hottest thing. Yeah. Because, yeah, I don't... That rubber's not going to be affected by the heat of the rim in the oven. I'll dump the rest of that cornbread down in here. All right. I'm going to let that all melt, let those eggs Put cook. Put the lid on and we'll let that cook and we'll have us a second one. There's our master baker. <laughs> baking I, don't us up, I don't know about that. Baking us up some cornbread this morning. Okay, let's see what we got here. I am excited, man. I've already been eating bacon and cornbread. <laughs> Woohoo, look at that. Well, this bacon is going to need some, maybe a Cutting little persuading. Oil. The nice thing is this makes a, a nice meal that's actually simple to do. Well, I'm going to turn this over so you can see how brown the potatoes got. Ooh, well, I oh, yeah, look at that. Dumped the whole thing. That's nice. I like them like that. Brown is a little bit crispy, a little bit chewy on the bottom. Yeah, that yeah, should that be good. Is, that is nice. Want me to hold another one for you? Well, I think we're going to have more than we can eat here. That makes a nice big burrito. Yeah, that's a heck of a breakfast burrito right there. <laughs> All right. Absolutely good to go. We'll give you guys the close-up shot here. Bacon, potatoes, eggs, cheese. Mm. Heck yeah. And we had cornbread muffins for dessert. Heck yeah. We already had it. <laughs>
Delicious. That's the way to eat. That's the way to live. We make our own rules out, out mm. here camping. Mm -hmm. That's a good combination. I make breakfast burritos a lot, but usually not with the, not with the potatoes. Yeah. So mm. I think we're gonna call this uh, the end of our camping trip, and uh, and say goodbye. But I sure appreciate you guys watching. Here's Perry Peacock. Check out his channel. Wilderness Innovation. Uh, he's got some really great stuff on there. Uh, a real true expert in survival. Um, you know, th this is the real deal right here, Perry <laughs> Peacock. So thank you everybody for watching. We've uh, take care. We're, we're gonna have to go home and, and jog around the track or something to to burn off all the mm. calories because yeah. we we really <laughs> ate well on this trip. Steve's a good so, cook. <laughs> you know, it was good times. I I really enjoyed Perry's company and we had a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.